Siamo qui stasera con Carlo, andiamo a recuperare un talk che doveva essere fatto qualche giorno fa, ma non siamo riusciti per i problemi meteo a registrarlo. Um, stasera con Carlo parliamo di un software che ha scritto lui che si chiama Sticker e che serve per catalogare degli oggetti all'interno delle scatole. Può essere utile per un uso personale e privato, ma anche negli hackerspace. Con lui faremo il talk in inglese um, e quindi uh, let's switch uh, to English. Um, I just uh, made uh, um, a small introduction of uh, you and the project, so um, here we go. Hi. Uh, I used to, I was living out of a backpack before. Now I have more, more space and more stuff, so I got stuff. I had to figure out a way to organize it all because because I couldn't even find things in my backpack. And this is what I came up with. I have these stickers with numbers on them. Uh, yeah. And I put the stickers on, on things. Like, well, that's not a good example. Um, like, here's my keyboard. It has a sticker on it. And then I recorded my catalog where the things are. Uh, but let's, um, yeah, we can start with the keyboard. So this is number 3041. We can say, um, well, let's do it this way, sticker. We're going to say the 3041 is an Atreus keyboard. Now I can um, sticker scan, and this lists everything in my catalog. And one of the things is the Atreus keyboard. I, ali I usually alias um, K, K to sticker, so I can do K scan instead. And also, I don't have to write out the full command, so I can do KSC. Uh, okay. That's not so interesting. I, I can catalog, let, let's do another thing. Here's um, an LTO5 tape, uh, LTO3 tape. Um, maybe you can see, yeah. And I already put a sticker on this. It's number 1160. Okay, but um, the whole point is that I can find my things. And if I just have a list of things, that's not so helpful. Well, as I think of my things, things can be inside of things. So this, this tape here, well, it's in box number, oh, sir. Oh. oh, what was that? One, one, two, two. Do you see the sticker when I do this? Do you see the number? Yeah, we can see. Good. So we're going to put the, okay, we have the tape number 1160, and it's going in box number this, this is box number 1122. Ah, so I had not actually listed box number 1122. Let's also do that. Um, this is a, these boxes are really cool. They stack and they nest. That's why they're called stack and nest containers. I turn them around. How's that? Okay. Now I have three items in my catalog. Um, but there's also, this one is flat. There's a hierarchy. Yeah. Um, I can do uh, Uh, 
Okay. Um, let's do it this way first. I'll put both of those options. Okay. This says that we have a box, number 1122, and inside of that is this number 1160. And, you know, we could put something inside the tape, sort of. We could say, like, um, uh, I hope my spelling is correct. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. OK. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to say we're, we're going to add. Is that it? Oh, good. Um, we're going to put some videos inside the tape. Um, this push command does a few things in one. It creates a new item and it assigns a number. And because I didn't give it a number, it assigns a negative number. And I use negative numbers for things that don't actually have stickers on them. So I, I can't put a sticker on the data inside the tape. So instead, I um, give it a negative number. So now when I do the same members command, I can see that I have the backup of the project of um, Koran to do it videos in right. uh, in the tape in the container, and I can have a lot like now. Now let's say I have a lot of stuff in the database now. Um, now I want to look up the backup, so I can. Um, I can use the pick command to search for 42. And then I can, well, that doesn't, that doesn't do anything. But then I can scan, scan that. And then it'll tell me, OK, yeah, I, I do have that. And then I can uh, locate. It tells me exact position. Um, and I can do it verbose, so it tells me all the, the descriptions. So now when I'm looking for my data backup, I say, OK, it, the backup is on an LTO3 tape. That LTO3 tape is inside this container. And while I could also say this container, um, it's on a cart, this cart. I don't have a number for the cart, but I could say, um, uh, so then I can yeah. Um, yeah, so now I know that I have I'll do it the other way. When I'm looking for my video backup, I I need to go to the the cart. Then on the cart, I need to find number 1122. And then inside that, I have my tape. But I also have some other tapes in here. Let's add them to the system. This is number 1152. So we can say um, there's actually a concept. Uh, wait, before I get there, let me just summarize what we've done so far. Items, um, the you can pretend the data structure is this. An item has a description, a number, and a container number. So this item is LTO3 tape. That's its description. Its number is 1160, and its container number is 1122. In fact, it's a little more complicated because you because you have there are instances in classes. Um, and the user interface, you only interact with instances, but it, in the back there's classes. And that's helpful for a reason you'll see right now. So now I have my LTO3 tape. Um, I can, um, what's the command? Clone, clone, 1160, 1152. OK, now I have two LTO3 tapes. And here's the other. Yeah, and they're um, uh, 
they're they're in different places still. Um, but I well, it's, this way might be a bit more clear. But I can move them to the same place. Okay. But the other thing is, since they're um, they actually share the same description. So if I change the name, the description of uh, LTO three of the one one five two to like. Um, in a plastic case. Now they both have the same description. I can also give it dimensions. Um, so I pretend everything's a box. In this case, it is a box, but you have things that aren't boxes, like this isn't that boxy. But um, there's in a box, as in, as far as stickers concerned, an item has inner dimensions and outer dimensions. Um, actually, let's start with the um, let's start with this box. The outer dimensions of this box, let's say it's something like I don't know, thirty millimeters. I'll get to units later, but let's say it's uh, forty-five by thirty by 20. Um, oh, that was the wrong one. I meant to do it with uh, two, two. And the inner dimensions, we can say they're 35 by 25 by 16. Oh, 16. Oh, shoot. Outer is that. Inner okay. Um, now we'll add the, the dimensions of the um, the inner dimensions is what you can put inside. The outer dimensions is what it takes up. You can't put anything inside the tape drive. So we'll just say the outer dimensions of the tape are something like. 10 by 10 by 2. Okay, now um, we have a cool feature. What is it? Fits. Okay, once I've specified um, the dimensions of 1152 and 1122, then I can run fits and we'll find boxes that have space for my item. And it will consider that, for example, um, it'll consider that it needs enough length and volume. It'll consider what else is, it'll also consider what else is in the box already. Um, yeah. Did that dimensions thing make sense? I feel like it was kind of confusing. Yeah, it makes uh, perfectly sense. Cool. Uh, let's see what else I should talk about. Okay. Maybe you now I, I started working on this. Um, or initially, I just thought about the data structure for like a year, and I I cataloged my stuff. The catalog was kind of like, kind of like this. Um, I said something like one five two. This is already really good because in Vim or whatever text editor, I could search for. Oh yeah, let's put the data back up on. Um, one, uh, yeah. So when I'm looking for the videos, I could search for video, and then I could see it's number negative one, 
and I could search for um, container number 1152 and see that's it. And then I could look for its container and I could trace it all the way up. But it was, it was also, so it worked um, for, for when it wasn't a, it worked when it was a relatively shallow hierarchy. Um, so actually, oh, actually, I mean, more on that later. What was good about this though is because I didn't, didn't have any software to maintain, I could try out new things. Like I had, for a time I had an idea of, um, it was borrowed from, and I could say this was borrowed from number like 1144 and I don't know, 1144 could have been like, um, Alex, my, my friend Alex, I don't know. Um, and I decided I didn't like that feature, but I was able to, to um, try the, all this out. Now, one problem with this was it was annoying to do queries that were a long hierarchy. So I didn't actually do it this way. I would actually do something like, instead of writing, instead of having all this hierarchy, I would really say something like, um, like this. And also, uh, and then as I, so I had to migrate all this to my new system. And as I was doing this, I realized there were some, some commands that were just useful to have. Like I wrote the commands for them. I kept them in the whole system. So if you ever, did it start out this way? You'd have those same commands, and I was thinking this because that explains some of the the other things I was looking at here. So um, another thing we might want to do. Which one should we talk about? So suppose I had that. I had. Oh, it's frozen. Do you still hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. We can do hear you. You are not frozen, and uh, it's okay. Everything okay. is okay. And I have like three minutes left. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll. Uh, so I had some cool features for that. I thought that was a nice way to do things. I'll just run through a few more features and then comment on politics. Um, another thing I can do is attach images or whatever. I can. So I can say, what do I want to do? I don't know. Well, it's not relevant, but just as an example. So that, and then I can, and actually there's a, this, this is like very well tuned to, um, if I want to scan things. So they're all like, all there are all these little features that work out well for um, cataloging things. Um, I guess I shouldn't go into all the details. Um, but yeah, so as I was doing this, originally it was just for me. Um, and then I noted, uh, one thing I noted was, it's really easy for me to find things. A lot of other people, like I'm around a lot of pretty normal people, not hackers nowadays, which is kind of new for me. And a lot of them use Amazon Prime. And I never understood why people use it because it's so expensive and the stuff isn't very good. But now I, I think I understand now. I think one of the reasons is because they don't have their own inventory management system. So instead they outsource that to Amazon. And so they get these disposable goods instead of whatever stuff they find on the street or get in bulk or whatever. And uh, I think it'd be cool if we, or if we, if we would uh, maintain our own inventories, then we would um, not have to have the centralized internet retailer where we get things from or I don't really use it, but yeah. And, and like, then you could, you could trade with your neighbors, you know? Um, let's see. Another, another, um, another thought I had while I was making this, I always want, I always cared that it be very, um, a way it differs, differs probably from how retailers do it. I always cared that it'd be easy to install because that's the, like, otherwise I won't use my own software. 
and that it be robust to failure in different ways. And in particular, um, in this case, it needed to work without electricity. So I have a way of, of printing out, um, yeah. I can print out the, and you know, because printers never work. I have a receipt printer and I can send this to my uh, receipt printer. Yeah, so I should. Uh... Yeah, so there's the printer. I'll do it again. Yeah. And this has a. Um, if it's like a search engine, but it you know it's it's a paper, so we call it an index. The, so you can look up you can look up the word you want here, like I can't read it, <laughs> um, stack t video whatever, and then on this other section, well you can you can run the command for yourself and see how it works. Um, yeah, uh, okay, I guess that's time. <laughs> Okay, we are perfectly in time, over 21 minutes, that is uh, our standard. Just um, uh, one note and one question. The note is uh, that uh, the system could be useful also for hackerspaces. That's the reason why we uh, in somehow decided to present this on Progetto Partigua. And uh, the question is about uh, the, um, uh, the license. And this is a free software, of course. I, yes. I, I need to put the license in the software so that you're sure of it. I still haven't gotten around to writing it. I will do it properly, like FSF says, and put it in every single file and put the license just the right way. But uh, a Faro GNU public license. OK, and um, if you can write down some quick reference uh, of, about uh, where to find uh, uh, the software. There. Okay, so I believe uh, we have everything, uh, and a big thank uh, to you, Carlo, to uh, participate uh, for participating in uh, Progetto 42 Talks. Thank you.